So, you want to play a bard. Well, do you like being able to talk your way in or out of any problem? Do you like the arts? Do you like being fabulous? Do you like weaponizing musical instruments? Or do you like being a magical little hoe? Well then, the bard class is the class for you. I'm going to... I'm going to inspire myself. <laughs> Why not? As you're falling. Uh, yes, I'll start singing to myself. This is a stupid idea. Uh, I, I'll say I'll inspire myself. I'll sing. Uh, I give inspiration. It's just what I do. Every time they try to knock me down, I just get bold. I give inspiration. Every time I do. Every time I open up my mouth, it comes out gold. <laughs> I love this. Oh. Uh, for what, for what yeah, check yeah. are you doing that for? Uh, Bards. Bards, bards, bards. To bard or not to bard? That is the question. If you and your party lack one, then are you really questing? When I say the word bard, what may come to your mind might be a mere minstrel. But the truth of the matter is that the wide variety of forms that bards come in is scant as simple. Now some of you watching might be familiar with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and their bards, and as an example, their colleges of lore and valor. But with the rise of Pathfinder's second iteration, they've been given a wider wealth of customization and power. And I can barely think of a better place to begin but the core of every bard. Their muse. But what, pray tell, be what you boast to be a muse? Well, you see a muse they choose upon their creation that aside from granting a few unique spells to boost their repertoire, it inspires and drives them to do what it is that they do. There are three within the core rulebook, so let your imagination go, and in no particular order, they are Enigma, Polymath, and Maestro. Enigmas have a muse that holds mystique and mystery. It could be a concept, legend, or perhaps a deity. Well versed in the many secrets of the multiverse, their drive is to discover more, but they're knowledgeable enough on their own, with their own unique feat, bardic lore, which lets them recall information about any topic, any person, place, or thing, and their added spell True Strike helps them contend in any ring. It helps make up for a shit to hit because of your dumpy strength or dex, by rolling twice on your attack and taking whichever roll is best. You might recognize it if you've played D&D 5th and justly ignored it on your spell list, but before you think to yourself, how useless, what rotten luck, fret not, my friend, in Pathfinder, the spell doesn't suck. Polymaths are your jacks of all trades, in which skills they have a plenty, in case you fancy being something akin to a skill monkey. Their muse could be an eclectic fae, a dwarven bay, or a need to gain the system in all pursuits for there's no such thing as unlucky. Their versatile performance feat does something neat, letting them use their performance to meet the requirements of other feats, but they can also use it when they need to meet and greet, find someone to beat, or convince them you're not drunk, you're just hugging the stream. And if they ever get tired of doing everything, they can summon their unseen servant to do things for them, because we all know the bane of every well-balanced bard is boredom. Last but not least brings us to the maestro, the kind of virtuoso bards we probably are most familiar, love, and know. Our harpists, our flouters, poets, orators, dancers, and shouters, but most respectively, every adventuring party's beloved supporter. Whether their muse is an angel singing gospel or a devil thrashing metal, they almost always have a musical score to settle. But enough preamble, let us segue and transition to their unique focus spell, Lingering Composition. A simple enough spell that potentially makes all of their composition spells longer, because whatever those other bards can do, maesters can do harder, better, faster, stronger. And of course, the occult spell they add to their repertoire is Soothe. Useful when your cleric is out of spell slots and the party's first aider can't roll above a two. A bard's muse grants access to a wealth of feats, unique to each, but before you ask, am I confined to just one? Of course not, you can mix and match for two or three times the fun, and every bard gains access to a few select spells. Allies just all failed against a big bad dragon's terrifying presence? Why? Just cast counter performance, and replace all those saves with a roll of your own, because there can be no cravens when there are dragons to bone. And what better to cast when your barbarian flies into that rage than your composition cantrip Inspire Courage, granting all who hear not just a plus one against fear, but also to their attack rolls and damage. But you might be asking yourself, how exactly do I play a bard? Vecna is going to cast, with his last 7th level spell, wow. a 7th level uh, banishment spell. 
Uh, I would like both Pike and Grog to make charisma saving throws, please. Oh, but I counterspelled it at eighth level. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's why wow. I got closer, motherfucker. Oh. So as the as the banishment spell fizzles in place, that was clutch. Holy fuck! There's clutch. I know I'm not doing that. Blair is right in your direction. Bring it! Oh my god, Scanlan! All right. Wow. Uh, no words. Just seething hatred in your path. That's an end this turn. After all is said and done, our dear bards have more roles than just one. They can buff or debuff, put up a strong defense, or go on the attack. With their spells, their charisma, and a little bit of luck, they can see that the day is always won. While they might not have the same versatility in their magic as their fellows the wizards might, they more than make up for it for their skill, talent, and wit to do any job right. But that just scratches the surface of the depths that is my favorite class in all of D&D. Pathfinder. And if you don't yet see, play one for yourself, and then get back to me. Whether singing songs or slinging spells, or just performing in their favorite tavern atop a keg, it's never a dull moment for one of these charming bastards in the party. And now you know how to play a bard. So, good luck. Oh, and break a leg. <laughs>